Hi everybody, it's Detrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique and I am back again for the final portion of our Kaleidoscope Pendant tutorial. And in this portion we're just going to simply be stitching our two little components together. And you may be wondering how we're going to uh, combine this herringbone, tubular herringbone, with this right angle weave. Well, the simple answer is we're just going to count on the math that we did at the beginning to get us through it. Because we have 30 beads, um, 30 rows of tubular herringbone on here, we, we know that this number is divisible by 5, 6, 3, and 10. And on this piece, we used the same principle. We had 30 base beads of our initial ring. And, <coughs> excuse me, we opted to create our units on every fifth bead in order to come out with six units and have everything even and looking really pretty. So all I've done here is I tied back into my main component just like I showed you guys in part one. I simply dove under a thread bridge here between my ados, tied two overhand knots, pulled my knot in and moved up here and then ended my tail thread. So where I'm starting from here are these two beads that are situated in the center of the little bale. And my thread is exiting to the left of the first bead. There's one bead, two beads. So we're going to call this bead one and bead two. And my thread is exiting in between those two beads. And it is, I'm sewing to the left. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the right angle weave components here, or units that we made using the 11 O's on the side of our bezel to sew in or to sew them together. And I'm going to just go ahead and be using these same little 15 O's, the Light Amethyst Gold Luster 15 O's that I used here as the accent on my pretty bezel. And it's really, really simple. You just have to make sure that you count correctly. So let's go ahead and get started. You're going to need your two pieces. You'll need to be tied on and exiting between these two beads. It doesn't matter which direction you're sewing. I'll be sewing to the left. You could be sewing to the right. It makes no difference. We're going to pick up two of our little 15 beads. And we are going to take our needle. And this is the back side of the bezel. We're going to come through that bead on the right. So my thread is exiting the right side bead. So I'm coming through the bead on the right and coming up. And I'm going to pull that through. Then I'm going to sew across the 11 0 here at the top of that little unit. And I'm going to pull everything down a little closer. And then I'm going to pick up two more. I'm sorry. Then I'm going to come down the little 11 0 here on the left side of that unit first. So we're going to come down through that bead before we pick up. Then we're going to pick up two more of our 15 O's. So I'm going to wing this around where you can see what I'm doing. So my thread is exiting this bead right here. I'm just going to sew through that very next bead and sew through to the fifth bead. So I'm going to count that bead as one. One, two, three, four, five. And I want to be exiting that fifth bead. Just like that. And I'm going to pull it all in nice and secure. And we're going to make sure that our work doesn't flip around like mine's trying to flip around. We don't want it to flip. And this is what it should look like. Those two little sets of beads are cinching my bezel to the base. And so now I am exiting here. And because we did our math and we're counting, we're in the exact place we need to be to repeat that. So I'm going to pick up two more 15 O's and I am going to come up through that right angle weave bead on the right. I'm going to sew across the 11 O at the top and come down the bead on the left before I pick up the next two beads. And 
Now I can pick up my next two 15s. And I am going to sew through the very next bead on the, on the base. So my thread is exiting this bead right here. I'm just going to go through the very next bead in front plus uh, for a total of five. So one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. And pull those two beads into place. And you don't want to pull super tight because we can tighten this up a little bit later, but we don't want to get it off balance to where it's going to be a farther stretch when we get to these beads down here. So don't pull your work too super tight. So now I'm just going to repeat that for this unit, this unit, this unit, this unit. And then I will meet you guys back as I'm doing this last unit. So here I am and I've worked my way around and I'm getting ready to do this last little unit. So I have my two little beads on right there and I'm going up that 11 out. And because I didn't pull too tight, look how pretty, pretty centered my, um, my bezel is within the component. And now I can sew across that 11 out and come down this one on the left. And then I'll add the last two beads so coming down that last 11 there. And then all I want to do after that is I am going to pick up these two beads. I am going to make sure I go into the right bead. And so forward five beads again. And I should come out exiting exactly where I started this round from. And I do. One, two, three, four, five. And pull that in and snug it up. And now all I want you to do is sew back through all the beads and follow the exact thread path and reinforce that and make sure, and this time you can tighten things up and make it fit a little tighter. So let's look at the back. So here's the back. And here's the front. And here's the side view. And look how pretty that is. All right, so let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and sew back through and reinforce this one time. And then I'm going to talk about what you can do if you want to add just a few final embellishments. So as you're sewing through, make sure that you're paying close attention. Use a magnifier if you need to. Because you want to go into the same exact beads in order to um, eliminate the risk of having any exposed thread on your project. And as you sew up, this time you can sew up through both of your 15s and the 11 over there at the same time. Saves a little bit of a step. Same thing once you cross over the 11 at the top. And you're sewing down the left side. You can hit all three beads at once. Just make sure you're not skipping any. All right, I've got four more to reinforce, and then I'll come back. So after I've reinforced this last unit, I'm going to sew through the five eightos on the base, just like we did before. So we wind up right back where we started from, which is exiting this seed bead here under our bale, right there. Now this next part is completely optional. The reason I'm going to take it is, for, uh, uh, there's a couple of reasons. For one thing, this feels a little loose. On the first pattern, I, when I made this one, I sewed it together completely differently. Um, I used the beads on this ring, the initial ring of our bezel, to sew, to stitch through to the beads on the base. But my gold beads were so tight, I was having trouble getting through them. And that is why I decided to change the way I sewed it together. But now I want to firm it up. And like I said, this is completely optional. After you've reinforced that, that um, bezel is not going anywhere. But it also, the second reason I decided I want to do a little bit further is because I don't like all of this bright gold ring right here. If you like that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I'm going to show you one little last 
thing that we can do. I'm going to come up those three beads, just like I was going to reinforce again. And now I'm going to come across through that 11-0, just like we did the last two rounds. And then the next thing I'm going to do after coming through the 11 0 here at the top is I'm going to come down just the 11 0 here on the left side and I'm going to pull my thread through. Then I am going to pick up three of my 15 0s. And this is where you're going to have to count to make sure that you go into the right bead. I was exiting that C bead when I started. I want to count over to the third bead. One, two, three three. I want to go in on the right side of the third bead, that third eight oh. Pull those two beads into position. I am going to pick up two more. And coming out of that bead, I'm going to go up through the left side bead on that next red angle weave unit. And this is just at further securing that bezel to the base. And at the same time, it's covering up a little bit of that gold. All right, so then all we got to do is move through the bead at the top. Come down the bead on the other side. And we're going to pick up three more beads. Then we are going to count over to the third bead. Here's the two beads I split to do my embellishment. So I'm going to start with this one is one. One, two, three. I'm going to come in from the right side into that third bead. Make sure you don't get your um, thread hung up. Like, See how mine's hung up? And my needle got twisted around through there somehow also. All right, so I put those three beads in. I'm going to pick up three more. And like I said, this is completely optional. You do not have to do this part if you are satisfied. All right, so now I'm coming out of this side of the bead. I'm going to go up into that 11-0 on the next unit. And that's already feeling much more uh, firm and less wobbly. And I like that it hides a little bit of that gold. All right, so I am going to just finish this up, adding those accent beads all the way around. If you run into a spot like this one where it's like really tight trying to go through that 11-0, instead of running the risk of breaking it, you know that you can just go under it, just like that. And you will not have any exposed thread by passing under. Then you can just simply come down that 11-0 on the other side, only the 11-0, and continue on. I don't know if you guys knew that, but there's several ways to bypass a really um, tight bead. You just have to kind of think about it. All right, I'm going to pick up my next three. I'll finish this one off, and then I will head off to do the rest. So I am coming out of that 11-0. There's my split bead, so I'm going to count over one, two, three, and go through that third bead. All right, let me finish this up, and I'll meet you guys back for a final discussion. So I have just finished adding the last three beads here, and I have come through that 11-0 at the top. And I like the way that feels much better. It doesn't feel quite as flimsy, and it looks really good. I want to check my work to make sure that everything sits on um, an even plane, and it does. It looks really pretty. Check the, um, check the 3D dimensional proportionate looks really pretty. I'm really happy with the way that came out, guys. 
All right, so the only thing we have left to do is to weave our thread off or tie some half-hitch knots. And so we could just work our way back up to the center ring and tie some knots, or we can work our way back down and out to the outer ring and tie some knots. It's totally up to you which way you want to go. Um, I think it would probably just be easiest to come up through and go to the top since we're so close. We can go up through these two 15 O's there on the left side. And then we would pass back through the 11 O here on the center, on the very center ring. And I think if you try to do your knots, do your half hitch knots, it's probably best to do them close to the 11 O. So just come under the thread bridge there, right there where your working thread is exiting. Pull until you have a loop, then catch that loop, but you want to make sure that your knot falls right there beside that 11 -o. As you slide it in, you want it to fall on the same side of the 11 -o that you are exiting. And then move forward a few and do it again. And I think, like I said, I think it just works out best if you do it near the 11s. All right, I'm going to put my headset back on, folks, to do mine. So in other words, I would just go ahead and sew through these next three 15s, come out that 11, tie another one, and so forth. And then once you're finished with your last knot, pass through a few more beads before you cut the thread off. All right, so there I am going through two of my 15s. Now, 115, the one in the middle kind of sets off to an angle because, remember, we used it to um, tighten down our bezel. So now I'm going to come on through the next 15 and the 11. I am going to tie another knot right here. I'm going to come under that thread right there beside my 11. Pull slowly till I have my loop and then come right through the loop with my needle and pull my knot in. All right, I'm going to do a couple more, and I'm going to cut my thread, and we'll come back and finish this off. So to finish this off, all I am going to do, because I didn't create that extra loop of beads in part one, I'm just going to take a jump ring, and I'm taking a smaller jump ring here, and I am fishing it right through my 8 here at the top of my bale. And I'll make sure I have a nice, strong closure on that. And if I were going to make an earring, I would stop right there because your earring finding would hook through this loop. But if I wanted to make a pendant so I could run a chain through later, obviously I'm going to need another jump ring to run the opposite direction. So let me just close that up. I'm going to fish my larger jump ring here at the top. Make sure you've got a nice close on that. This one's not closing too well. I'm not using these anyways. These are just brass, uh, gold-plated brass. I'm going to make some um, gold-filled jump rings to use on that. But obviously, you would put another jump ring to run this way so that your chain or your recording could go through. And there you have it. And that is my kaleidoscope pendant. I think this one came out really beautiful, guys. Um, I like them. I like it both ways. I just ran into a little bit of an issue because of the star-like gold galvanized Toho beads. The hole was a little bit smaller than on the um, ones I used on this one, which were the Perma Finish galvanized aluminum 11 O's. But that is what we have, and that is our finish. All right, guys, I hope you like this project, and I really appreciate the fact that you are a member. If you are watching, you have agreed to pay a small fee to join my membership and help support my channel and all the great content and stuff that I do for you guys here and on the AllurianBeeBoutique.com. All right, that's it, guys. Have a great day, and thanks for being here.